Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video. And welcome to the lesson number three of the series of tutorial on how to build a WordPress plugin from scratch. Welcome again. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the basic of a PHP object oriented programming in order to build our own custom theme. So in the previous lesson, we saw uh, some basic methods to secure our plugin. I decided to go with this one because it's kind of like my favorite one of that I, I like to use, but you can use one of the three methods, the one that suits you the best, it doesn't really matter. So as I said, at the beginning of this series, we're going to just use object oriented programming. If you don't know anything about PHP object oriented programming, probably you're going to have a little bit of a hard time following this series, but I will try to explain everything I do step by step. And I'll try also to teach you a little bit of object oriented programming or OOP shortened version uh, while we build our own amazing first WordPress plugin. So let's get started. So the first thing that we have to do, we have to create a class and a PHP class to create one, you just need to write class, of course, and then the name of the class. And also in this case, uh, every time we uh, create a function in WordPress, uh, it's always better to try to find and assign a unique name to our class. Otherwise, we're going to have some real bad problems or real bad moments. So let's create a class by, in my case, Alicad plugin and we're using the Pascal case uh, type of uh, writing. There are different type of writing when you create methods name or classes name, you can use camel case underscore Pascal case. So if you want to use uh, camel case, you can use, for example, Alicad plugin and this is camel case because it starts lower and every time you have a new word there's a capitalized letter otherwise there's a pascal case that starts with a capitalized letter and then every single word is capitalized as well otherwise you have underscores that in this case alicad plugin uh, these are different methods let's follow kind of like the recommendation of the codex and use pascal case then let's go to another line and open the curly brackets you will see sometimes uh, users or also me in my videos using and opening the curly brackets for a class in line that's not a mistake it doesn't really matter if you open in line or another line it's not an issue it's just to respect the codex of wordpress it's just to respect like psr2 uh, coding standards and stuff like that let's maintain a, like a coding standard that it's globally recognized so everyone can read our code properly without getting confused so inside the class here we're gonna write all our methods that we're gonna see in a moment of course if we save it and we go in our administration panel and we activate our plugin nothing happens especially like we don't even initialize the class because the class in PHP a class doesn't initialize by itself nothing happens if we want to use this class we need to create a new instance of the class and store that instance inside a variable so in order to do that we have to create a variable that you can name however you want in my case it's gonna be alicad plugin called with camel case and inside here we're going to store a new instance of the alicad plugin class and we don't need to pass any parameter to the class this example here creating a class and inside here you write whatever method and then you store a new instance of the class inside a variable it's basic php object oriented programming you create a class, you create a variable, and you initialize that class. You could potentially, uh, if you don't need to reuse that class or call it in other sections, whatever, you could potentially just initialize directly the new instance of the class without storing a variable, but we will probably use it in other section. We will probably dynamically call uh, methods of that class via this variable. And I'm going to show you how to do it. It's going to be like super cool. Otherwise you can just call the class, but before doing this, we need to check if this class 
actually exist and that's a safety precaution that it's recommended in PHP when you create a class especially when you're creating a class inside the plugin that probably other developers are using many many other plugins you could have the same class name or stuff like that it's better always to do a quick check so before initializing the class we need to wrap these initialization inside a condition so if and only if the class exists and the class name that we need to check if it exists has to be the name of the class, of course, but passed as a string. This is a string, this is not a variable, so it's passed as a string, single quotes, double quotes, doesn't really matter, but check if the class exists and only if the class exists, let's initialize a new instance of this class. That's perfect. Let's save it. Let's go back in our backend, let's refresh, nothing happens. If we deactivate and activate, that's pretty standard, nothing, nothing is broken, that's amazing. So now, what happens? This is probably gonna be a little bit complicated, but follow me. So if we have, for example, a function called uh, custom function, something like that, and we need to pass some variables. So let's say that these here, we have an argument, and then this variable, everything that it does echo that argument. In order to call this function, what we do in a procedural PHP is just calling the custom function like this, and then passing uh, whatever argument, like this is my argument to echo stuff like that, right? This is pretty straightforward. So if we have something like this and we wanna do the same for the class, you see that when we initialize the class, we open and close the brackets, the regular brackets, but we're not passing any parameter. So if we wanna pass a parameter, for example, a string that says alicad plugin initialized, something like that, how in heaven do we store this argument? Like if in procedural code, when we create a function, we have the arguments that we are passing inside the uh, regular brackets, why in the class we can't? Because the class doesn't allow us to generate a class with the regular brackets. This is wrong, you don't have to do that. In order to basically simulate and have the same result of this one, we need to use the construct method of the class. So inside a class, you can write whatever method you want. So function method one, let's say, and this method could do whatever you want. Now you can have another function that is method two, and also this one, you can set whatever you want to do. But when we initialize the class, what is the method that gets called whenever a new class is initialized? The method that gets called by default is the constructor and you write the constructor by writing underscore underscore construct and the construct of course as you probably guessed is the method that accepts the parameter that you pass when you initialize a new class so here we can have our argument or whatever our string doesn't matter and here we can echo, this is gonna be just an example, but let's echo the string just to see if it actually works. So let's remove these two example methods, save it. And of course, also the construct is a function. So let's save it. Let's go back in our backend and let's refresh. And do you notice here what we have? If we inspect the element and we delete temporarily the menu, look at that, Halicat plugin initialized. So, we know that our plugin works, of course, we're doing something really, really bad that we shouldn't do, like initialize a plugin, passing a string and just echoing the string with a construct, but this is just an example to tell you how uh, the classes work and how by initializing a new class and passing a variable how you can use the construct method to pass a string and of course there are many many other options uh, way more advanced I'm not touching about the type string like for example if we are expecting this variable to always be a string you can say that hey this is a string 
And by saying this, like here we still have app initialize. If we pass like an array instead of a string, and inside the array, let's put some data like one, two, three. If we pass an array and we refresh our backend, you see that we trigger an error. And the error that it's fatal error, so it's blocking the execution of our website, says that in the construct, the method passed must be of type string and we pass an array. So by declaring this as a string, we are forcing uh, the acceptance, like we're forcing our method, our constructor method to accept only string to the specific variable. Here, of course, we can say that this has to be an array or this has to be an integer and so on, so on. I'm not gonna touch, uh, I'm not gonna use this because it's kind of more advanced and could give you some confusion. So let's not do that. Let's delete all this stuff, let's delete this variable, we don't need to pass it, and let's leave it like that for now. So if we save it and we refresh, everything is back to normal. So now we are in this situation where we have our class and we are initializing our class when the uh, website is loaded, when the plugin is loaded. Now it's time to use the built-in methods of WordPress to actually properly activate unique sections of our plugin. And when it comes to plugins, WordPress automatically triggers three default actions when you use your own plugin. So these actions are and are triggered in different moments. The moments where these actions are triggers are on uh, activation and then on uh, deactivation and then on uninstall. So these are three different steps of the usual life of a plugin. You activate a plugin, you deactivate a plugin, you uninstall a plugin. The, it doesn't exist a method to trigger when you install a plugin because WordPress doesn't allow that. WordPress needs to take care of the installation of the plugin. Until the user activates that plugin, you don't have uh, the capabilities, you don't have access to anything on the WordPress installation of the user that is using your own plugin. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna create, for now we're gonna delete the construct because we're not using the construct in a class and you can totally remove it, it's not uh, obligatory to use a construct. We're gonna create some default methods to call when these actions are happening. So first let's create a function call activate then let's create a function called deactivate and then let's create another function called uninstall and as you can see here i'm creating these methods without using the usual prefix like alicad underscore activate because we are using object-oriented programming all these methods are inside the plugin class the alicad plugin class that has a unique name so these methods cannot be accessed by other classes or other functions if I don't want to. And even if I have another class with the same method name, it's not gonna interfere. We're not gonna have a PHP error because the method it's inside a class. So it's not publicly accessible and all this kind of stuff. So no conflicts are there. This is really helpful to keep our code cleaner and avoid to use all those stupid prefixes that we are forced to use, but let's continue. Now we have these three methods we need to or we want to call these three unique methods with the uh, built-in hooks activation actions that WordPress gives to a default plugin. So the first method is called uh, register underscore activation hook. And as you can see, my autocomplete suggests to use underscore underscore file underscore underscore. This is super cool because this is actually the proper way of writing the hook. By passing this global variable as a first parameter, we're saying that the register activation hook needs to work only in this very own file. So let's maintain this. Let's not go around and search for other files, other includes or other stuff. Just like check for the function that we're gonna pass inside this file. And as usual for every action, this is a default action. It works like a default action. We need to pass the function name that we wanna uh, activate as a string. So in my case, we wanna pass the activate but it won't work because the activate function, the activate method, it's inside the class. In order to tap this activate method inside the class, we need to pass an array here. 
So let's pass an array with two parameters. The first parameter is the class instance that luckily for us, we're storing inside this variable. And the second parameter is the string of the method, the function that we want to trigger. So in my case, it's activate. This way of writing, it basically identical to the usual add action, for example, in it, and then uh, function name. This is an example, of course, I'm not writing this code for real, but this register activation hook, it's identical to this, but the register activation hook needs as a first parameter, which file do I have to consider? By writing this global dynamic defined variable, this file, and then we're passing the array to say, hey, this activate method, it's inside the Alleycat plugin uh, class. So let's access this class and let's check for deactivate. Nothing too complicated. As you probably guess, also the deactivation method is identical to deactivation. So let's copy paste deactivation hook and let's write simply register deactivation hook and here let's call it deactivate. Uh, for now we're not gonna touch base the unistall method because there are actually two different methods to hook the unistall action and I'm gonna show you both and I'm gonna also tell you which one is my favorite and I guess the one that you should use but anyway let's stick with deactivation and deactivation because that's those are the two methods that we can actually test. I don't want to uninstall my own plugin because otherwise I'm going to delete my own plugin, but we're going to test that in the future. For now, just stick with the activation deactivation. So now, in order to test if this works, we're going to trigger some errors. Let's say that on activate, we can echo a message. Uh, the theme was activated. Oh, actually, is the plugin was activated. But if you know a little bit of PHP, you know that we are echoing a string inside a PHP function that it's called after the header was sent. So these will trigger an error and will trigger, most likely will trigger the header already sent error. But if this triggers an error, it means that the activation method works. And let's do exactly the same for the deactivate. Let's save it. Let's go back in our backend. Our plugin is not active, so if we refresh the page, nothing happens. We don't have any error message. If we activate the plugin, look at that, boom. The plugin generated 24 characters of an expected output during activation. Headers already sent message because we are trying to echo these on activation. This means that on activation, the hook called that unique method. That's perfect. If we leave the plugin active and we refresh, look, we don't have any more the error message because the action, the hook doesn't trigger the activation because we're not activating the plugin. The plugin is already active, so we're not doing everything again. But instead, if we deactivate the plugin, we're not going to have any error because the plugin is actually deactivated. So we are, yes, triggering the deactivation hook with the deactivate, but we cannot echo whatever message we have there because the plugin is not active. So we, uh, WordPress is not considering this plugin anymore. So why these two methods are useful? Well, we're gonna see it in the next lesson, but just to give you a hint or a preview, these two methods are really useful when you need to uh, edit or update the database of a user when they activate or deactivate the plugin. So for example, here, the clearest and the easiest example that you could do is uh, generate a custom post type and then flush the right rules. On the activation, because the plugin is not active anymore, so the custom post type is not visible, we simply flush the rewrite rules as well. And on uninstall that it's something that we're going to see in next lessons, you have to actually delete the custom post type. Because if we deactivate, we don't want to actually delete it because probably the user will reactivate it. So we don't want to delete any data. But here on Unistall, what you usually do on Unistall, you delete the custom post type or you delete all the plugin data from the DV. That's a overall cleanup. So 
that's pretty much it for this lesson. We saw how to write our very first own and super simple PHP class in object-oriented programming. We created three methods that we're gonna use in the next lesson, and we checked the first two built-in registration hooks for a plugin. So it's pretty much it for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And if you want, you can spend a couple of minutes on the support me page of my website where you can find different ways and methods to support me, support my channel, and help me to do better videos and better tutorials for you. Thank you again, guys, and until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding.